Hi class, this brief presentation will tell you how to do the EdTPA assignment, part one. The EdTPA assignment instructions and submission links may be found in the assignment folder, which is on the course materials page. All the major assignments, as you probably are aware by now, are found in this folder. If you click on the assignments folder, you'll see a list of the assignments, each in their own folder. The EdTPA project, formerly known as the EdTPA Instruction and Assessment Project, is the top link. So you can go ahead and click on that when you're ready to complete the project. Inside that folder, you'll see the two folders. One is for part one and one is for part two. Today, we're only talking about part one. I'd like you not to go on to part two until um, a future week when I've covered that. If you click on the part one folder, you'll see two things. First is the EdTPA assignment, instructions and template. This is a very important file because this not only contains the instructions, but it's where you're going to do your work. And then you'll see, secondly, the submission link for when you finish the file. If we open up the instructions and, um, and template, we'll see a file, a Word document, and this is the beginning of that Word document. Again, this file contains not only the instructions, but where you'll be doing your work. In the past, I've had students try to do their file, do their work on a separate file. This year, I'm not going to accept that. It's important to do your work right inside this template because this tells you lots of details and it has the format all set up. Um, I've had students who don't use this file to do their work on and they skip steps. So if you send me a file that's not this file with your completed work, I will be returning it and asking you to put it on the template. So you can see that this part one is worth 10% of your course grade and it's due February 23rd. When you finish it, you're going to submit it to that link that we saw before in, uh, in the folder. So if we look at the overview of the assignment, in this assignment, you will select a standard you're going to select that from the standard folder that's on the course materials page. And you're going to create two learning targets that are allowed with the standard. Your standard should be one of the standards for your grade level that you're getting certified in. If your certification is adolescence, your standard should also align with your subject area. So for example, if you're adolescence English, you should, you should select one of the adolescent ELA standards. If you're elementary, you have a little more leeway in the subject area, but it should be an elementary standard. So in other words, your standard should match your certification area. You will briefly describe a lesson you might use to teach one of the learning targets. So you're going to select a standard, create two learning targets, and then provide a little more detail for one of the learning targets. In part two, you'll be given a hypothetical data from a quiz-based formative assessment. You'll analyze the data by learning target to look for patterns of learning, and you will provide meaningful student feedback. Finally, you will reflect on next steps for teaching or reteaching, as well as on the assignment. So that's all coming up in part two. Again, the note, please complete your work on this template. Here are the student learning objectives for the product project. This project is really to help you think about when you do your EdTPA, how to analyze data. So after this project, you should be able to align a standard and two learning targets with a lesson. Develop a lesson a little bit aligned to the standard into one learning target. We're not going to be going a lot into page after page of lesson plans. It's just going to be a quick, how would I teach this? Describe a separate formative assessment for your lesson, and this will be um, 
in part one, you'll see, but it's not going to be a huge description either. It's going to be a quick, I, here's how I could tell students are learning while I'm teaching the lesson. After you do, when you do part two, you'll graph the results of a hypothetical assessment. You won't be actually giving an assessment. You'll be given data to graph. And you're going to be looking at that data and analyzing the data for a group of students and for an individual students. You're going to um, provide feedback and use assessments to plan for future learning. Let's get into the specifics for part one, which again, is worth 10% of your grade. The first thing you will do is select a learning standard. So you're going to go into the folder that's on the course materials page and look around and select a standard that you could think of a lesson for and that you think you could align a couple of learning targets to. This is worth one out of the 10 points. When you've selected your standard, you're going to type it in full right here by the word standard or below the word standard on the document. Again, you're not going to do it on a separate file. Be sure to include the standard number and the source. So is it a next generation science standard, for example, as well as the full wording of the standard. Sometimes students submit standards that just have the words and not the number or the source. For full credit, you're going to give me the number of the source and the wording of the standard. After you have your standard in 1.2, you're going to think of two learning targets. So standards are very broad and they generally take many lessons to teach. So I want you to think of two learning targets and it may be helpful to think of them as separate lessons. So for example, if your standard has to do with um, teaching students about um, place value, then think of two lessons that are related within that standard that would kind of be sequential and come up with two different learning targets. So you might, in one uh, lesson, teach about the 10 places, tenths play, or the tenths place. I'm sorry, if it's for elementary students, you're gonna teach about the ones place, and then the second, the tens place, and then the third, you might have a, a hundreds place if you were doing three. So these should be two separate lessons, two separate learning targets that relate to the standard. Um, be sure when you do a learning target that you have a target for success. So uh, it's tempting just to write an objective, but remember what separates a tar target from an objective is a target for success. So an objective might say students will be able to divide a two digit number by a one digit number. And a target just means, well, how, how accurate do you want them to be? So that to change that into a target, you might say students will be able to divide a two digit number by a one digit number with 80% accuracy. This will become important in part two when you see, when you have to determine which students have met the learning target. The next thing you're going to do is to plan a lesson for one of the learning targets. You don't have to plan a lesson for both learning targets. So the first thing you're going to do is think about, okay, which one do I really want to detail a lesson for? And check either learning target one or learning target two on the template. Don't check both. And then in just a few paragraphs, describe your um, plans for teaching the lesson which may be harder than it sounds. As I read this, I want to be able to see the lesson and how it's unfolding. So it helps to say, well, first I will do this. I will provide these materials. Next, I will do this. I will, um, and then finally, I will conclude with. This is how, just a simple explanation of how you would teach the learning target. Now, all teachers have to think about formative assessment, and that is, how will you assess the students while the lesson is going on? How will you under, know which students are understanding the material and which are not? So this will not, in the second part, you'll be analyzing hypothetical quiz data. That's not what this is. This is, are you going to be asking questions? Are you going to be doing a KWL chart? Are you going to be um, 
There are lots of formative assessment strategies that we'll be getting into. If, it, if your plan, but be specific. If your plan is, I'm going to be asking questions, make a list of five or 10 questions that you would ask students to, to gauge their understanding. This is the end of part one. And uh, so what you'll do is you'll put this all in the template, you'll save it, and you'll submit it to the link for part one. Please make sure you're submitting to part one and not part two. If you have any questions, don't forget, uh, you, you should reach out and email me. Um, if you'd like a conference, I can schedule one through Skype or over the phone. I'd rather you reach out than to be confused. No question is a, is a dumb question. This assignment may be revised and resubmitted up to a week after it's graded. So I hope this has helped you understand the EdTPA assignment, part one.